Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, I'm going to give you another example for your JavaScript game, for your JavaScript final. And that is we're going to take two numbers in the input boxes and add them together and place the answer in a paragraph. So that exercise will cover quite a few of your requirements for your final project. I think if I gave you one example of how to add them together, you'll be able to modify that to do the other mathematical equations that I'm asking you to do. Here's what the HTML would look like. In this case, I decided to go ahead and surround all of my questions with an ordered list and make each one a different list item. And so I've got question one and question two. You can do that if you want. I really am not concerned about the HTML as long as it's indented and it's semantically correct. What I mean by that is it's got to make sense. The tags that you use, the paragraphs, labels, input boxes, they have to make sense for what you're trying to accomplish. In this case, I've got my second list item. I've got the paragraph, let's do math. I've got two input boxes and I've given them both a label, number one and number two. And I've got another button here to add. Finally, I've got this paragraph that's got some dummy text here, the answer is. And I want my JavaScript to take four plus five, add and say the answer is nine. So how do I do that? Well, let's go over to our JavaScript. I've put some comments in to keep my code organized. And one thing I know I'm going to need to do is add those two numbers up. I know how to get those numbers with document.getElementById. And I ID them as N1, and I'm gonna get the value from N1, and I'm going to add it to the value of N2. Now, sometimes you don't know what property you need, like dot checked for the radio buttons or dot value for the input buttons. But that's one reason why I'm demonstrating this. Those are very common properties. We know we're gonna to need to add these two numbers. I'm going to set that equal to result. In fact, I'm going to do it correctly and make sure I explicitly declare my variable with the var keyword. I'm gonna declare the variable result. And just to see if this JavaScript is gonna work, I'm gonna add a window alert and show the result value here and not forget to end my JavaScript statements with semicolons. Save, I'm gonna refresh and I get an answer, great, a 45. So four plus five is refresh, that JavaScript is running and throwing this window alert of 45. Well, given that I know that it's four plus five is nine, what's happening here is it's taking these values as text. So I need to do one more thing. If I want these values to be treated as numbers, I have to surround them with the number function. Convert these values to numbers, save, fresh, and now four plus five is equal to nine. Now you can always refactor your code with more variables if you want. For example, instead of having this long statement here, I could say in my JavaScript var num1 and set that equal to this much. And then likewise, I could say var num2 and set it equal to this much. And that way, result is simply num1 plus num2. And semicolons go after all of our statements. Save, refresh, and I'm getting the same answer. So now I know my math is working correctly. So now my only problem is to connect it to the add button but you know how to do that because you know how to write event listeners. So to write an event listener, I need to surround this code with a function that I can call from my event listener. So let's indent that. Let's call this function question two. Obviously all of our function names need to be unique. I don't care what you call your functions as long as the name makes sense. So here's our function question number two, and I'm going to call it when I click the add button. So here's an event listener statement. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that and change that to button two. Make sure that my function does something. I'll do my window alert and call result in that window. I'll call the question two function, save, refresh, add, and I'm getting my nine. Now the only other thing I wanted to do is put the answer here instead of in these window alerts. Window alerts are great for debugging. It's very similar to console log. Console log does about the same thing as window alert, only it logs it to 
the console. I'm going to click my console button, refresh my page, add, and now instead of doing a window alert of nine, I'm logging result to the console. And both of them, both window alert and console log are great debugging tools. Window alert actually talks to the user. Console log just puts the answer in the console here. I'm going to stretch this out and you can see that that's the console tab so that you can see what's going on while you're writing your code without doing the window alert. But I'm going to close my console and say to myself, how do I get the answer to go into this paragraph? And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to document get element by ID. And let's see what the ID of that paragraph was. It was A2. A2. And because it's a paragraph, because it's textual block HTML content, I use the inner HTML property. And I'm going to set it to some text. What text do I want? I want the text. The answer is colon space plus the result. So now I've declared two variables. I'm getting the value from N1 from that text box. I'm getting the value from N2 that text box. I'm adding them together and putting the total and result. I'm console logging result and I'm also putting result plus this text in the inner HTML property of whatever is A2 and we know that that's a slow paragraph. Let's refresh my page. Let's change our numbers 10 and 2 and let's add and the answer is 12. And there we go. I've got my second question done for my JavaScript game. Some other ideas you might want to encourage are to window prompt the user immediately when they start the page with what is your name and set that equal to a variable username set to what is your name. Now, when you refresh the page, it's asking me what my name is. It's asking me for input. And when I click OK, I can now use that global variable elsewhere in my code. For example, I could say username, comma, and a space. And so now I can talk to my user. What is your name? My name is Lisa. And when I click my Add button, I can say, Lisa, the answer is 12. So it's very fun to collect input from the user either from window prompt or from these input boxes and then use those answers, set those answers to variables and use those answers to write back to the page. That can make your JavaScript game really fun and personalized. Thank you.